What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Debbie Royale. I am your host, as always, Kevin Coleman, at DeVoys underscore 22. And we are back with another edition of our film breakdown. So we like to do here is kind of look at it. And if you haven't noticed, we have a trend going. I'm really breaking down the 23 class for you guys. So you dynasty managers out there, like, hey, who do we expect? Who are we see in next year? Like, I've been trying to give you like a viewpoint of like, hey, here are some guys that you need to take a look at and see, hey, should you know, should we be adding him and Debbie? What do we see their profile as? And today we're gonna be talking about our guy Zay Flowers from Boston College. Now, Zay is a player that I've been very high on for the last couple years. Um, especially two years ago, I saw this kid. I said, you know what? He's very good. Let's let's look into him. And so we're gonna go over this now on the Patreon. We did a full breakdown of uh, Zay Flowers and like analytical breakdown. So Jason Stein came, you know, came on with me and we talked about like, hey, what do we expect from him? Um, it was a 30 minute podcast. It was really good. But I'm going to give you like a little tidbit of that. And then also kind of some film breakdown since we didn't really do that on there. So let's talk about Zay and what he's done this year. Obviously, he's looked very good this season. He's probably going to have the best statistical output, even though Boston College isn't very good this season. He got 60 catches, 791 yards, and eight touchdowns. Um, overall, just in terms of production-wise, we've seen that, right? So when we're talking about production, it hits the markers, especially for uh, analytics. So when we're just talking about what we see from him, yards per team pass, um, pass attempt right now, he's hitting in all those metrics. And we're talking about what he's been able to do. 2.78 is where he's at. You'd like to see him get just above that mark. He's right there in terms of where he's been at. So you, you're looking for what he's been able to do. College dominator rating, again, with his yards and share of touchdowns, he is over the average of wide receivers of the top 24 seasons. So he's seeing there but he's got it. He's over that mark, especially for his second year, his sophomore year, as you can see there, he actually hit over a 20% dominator rating. Something that does show you when we're talking about like what is projects for from an analytical perspective is one that you see. So that is something nice to see for Zay. So we are seeing those are the positives in terms of what his production profile looks like. So when you look at his production profile from a from an analytical perspective, we're seeing that, right? So this is Zay in terms of what he's been able to do. And again, when we're talking about Zay from a, uh, just a player standpoint, he is a bit of an older prospect, so you need to keep that in mind. Obviously, he's a senior who's able to do, but he's looked really good, explosive. Those eight touchdowns are going to be, he's going to have the best statistical season that he's had. Now, let's talk about his strengths and what he's going into. So, first and foremost about Zay, he might be small, and we're going to talk about that kind of with like, hey, what are some negatives or drawbacks from him? But his con contested catch rate is one of the best in the country. So when you look at PFF's grades right now this year and just what he's done, he's wide receiver 10 in college football. That's pretty surprising in terms of what we see from him being his size. He gets up there for 50-50 balls. And when you're looking at what he's been able to do from a from a statistical viewpoint, from a film breakdown on his contested catch rate, those things stand out to me. Like, hey, will he be able to kind of go up and go get it in the NFL with his small stature? Where do you go to there? I'm, I'm not going to say it's Steve Smith-esque, but like just seeing that he can do it shows you that he has that contested catch rate and his contested catch rate percentage has been great throughout his career not just this year like it's, it's been great looking at pffs looking at what he's been able to do it's been right there like he's been a top 10 guy there in terms of contested catch rate and that's something that you really like to see now yak again that's where he excels so if you're looking for what does he excel at it's yak yards after catch like he's wide receiver 10 in that area too and just based on his yards after catch i mean he's averaged around 7.1 for his career but again he has over 1100 right now 1100 1200 receiving yards after the catch like that is that is top 10-esque, right? So when you're looking at his highlight tape and we're going through his film and everything there, that's the key I want you to focus on, his contested catch rate and his yak. And then we got speed. We know what his speed is. I mean, that's just kind of one of those things when we're talking about what's going to stand out to him. I think he's going to test very well. When you're thinking of the 40 time, he's probably at 4-4. So when we're thinking of that, I think that's kind of where you 4-4, four, 4-5. Four, four, if he's in a 4-4 four, four range, that's good. Like that's where you're looking at. Now, if he's oh, if he's four five, I'm getting a little bit nervous. Uh, but again, four four ish. That that's kind of where I like to see him at. We know what he can do in open field. So again, that's the positives, right? Those are the things that you see with Zay that you love watching about him. Contested catch rate, fifty fifty ball, balls, goes up and get there. Yak speed. I think he's going to get the draft capital when we talk about that here in the outlook. Um, but all those things are positive. Now, if we're going to go into the negatives and what some things he could work on in terms of just being a better receiver and where he's at so average depth of target so not great so when we're talking about average depth of target that's one of his knocks that's something that um jay stein pointed out when we're talking about hey what is he doing here average depth of target he's wide receiver 45 ish on the year so 31 percent of his targets were short 
zero to nine yards in the center. That's not great. So when we're thinking of, and that's weird considering his yak and things that he does on tape, but he still doesn't have that, that average depth of target that we'd like to see. And that, that is kind of something to point out just from a statistical and analytical point is like, he does have yak, but a lot of those things are, you know, shorter targets. So when you think of shorter targets, now he can have the speed to make them out. Now, will that translate over to the NFL? And I think that was uh, Jay's biggest point. Like, hey, what is what is going to happen when he gets the NFL, NFL level speed and he's not playing in a kind of a down conference in the ACC, in, in, in my opinion? And, and where does that look like? And then drops. He, he does have drops issues. So when we're thinking of drop percentage, you know, he's wide receiver 19 in the year, not in a good way. That's He shouldn't be out that high. Um, he has so drops considered and drop percentage is considered on t- on target passes. So we're not talking about bad throws or whatever. He's at you know when you're looking at what he's he was at 15 and 12 percent his first two years, and then this year it's dropped, but it's still at almost nine percent, nine to ten percent in that range according to PFF's kind of grades and drop percentages. And we've seen this on tape. Like this is something that I highlighted on my tape on my profile breakdowns when I'm looking at him and I'm setting him in my in my model. What's going on there? And in size, like he's not going to ever hit the size metric. That's just not something that he's going to hit. 5'10", you want him to be at 5'11 in terms of like, hey, where is that size metric? Now he's listed 5'10". What is he really? I think that's the question mark. His BMI is not going to hit the metrics that people want to see for alpha or beta prototypes. And in 172 pounds, no. And again, this this varies in terms of analytical mo- mo- mode, but you want to see him at least get the 25 BMI. He's right under that, so he's close. He's average, um, but you're not going to see that size metric. I think that is the that is the key when we're getting into getting into Zay and what what he does. Now let's take a look at his film. Let's break this down. This is my favorite part of this. So again, you're going to see this. Like this is his athleticism, and this is his speed. Like right here, obviously, it's going to be a wide receiver pass. He turns it into a touchdown. Like this is the stuff that excites you about Zay. But again, this wide receiver class has a lot of profiles like Zay. So again, can he test well, right? But this throw, again, contested catch rate in there, able to use his athleticism, catches over the shoulder. Like that is a that is a legitimate throw. And when you're watching his tape, I have a lot of fun watching Zay. This is what has stood out to me about Zay moving forward, like just the last couple of years and what you've seen from him. Again, over the middle, bad defense, but hey, he's able to do it. Scores a touchdown there. Over and he and he has that separation. One on one, he does very good. Now against press coverage, he can struggle a little bit, but when they leave him open, he has that. And then this is his yak. That is the ability to kind of make those guys go. He has this great catch here. I love that his 50, hey, he's got that 50-50, but he also has good hand eye. I mean him able to bring this in. He sees where he's going to go able to take it in like that's a catch like that's a legit catch in the nfl and in college football like so when you're watching his tape those things are fun like those things are like oh wow he can do those things and you're excited about it again he makes a lot out of nothing terrible throw right here but he's able to turn this into it because of his speed and his size and his awareness of where he's going right his speed and his yak and those kind of acceleration again over the middle and then you're going to notice this about him a lot of catches over the middle in terms of just where he's going and, and they get him out in space and against Rutgers here you see this again you're going to see it on this play little a dot remember nine yards and he's going to make something out of nothing again I like that he didn't go out of bounds he goes there and tries to get those extra yards little things like that you know he's got that dog in him right like all the kids say he, he he's him um but again I, I just, in terms of what he is, and this is what me and Jay were talking about on the on a Patreon episode, he's 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 average, above average to average on pretty much everything, right? So how does he profile to the NFL is the question mark. Now, I've seen some guys, you know, they're mocking him in the first round. So uh, Damian Parsons from NFL Draft Network, I believe he just came out with a mock and they have him in the first round. Uh, I would probably have, you know, someone like Josh Downs from North Carolina maybe over him, right? Um, but he could, there are teams that could fall in love with this kind of profile when we see what Zay is and like, the, hey, I want to get him on my roster and I want to get him on my team. So I think there's a lot of, you know, what what will he be? Right. There's a lot of questions about that, but I think he could be very, very good um, in the NFL if he goes to the right team in the right system that utilizes his strengths that we worked on. So these strengths right here, yak speed gets him involved um, and, and he's more of a system guy. But let's talk about his outlook and what we think. I think, you know, when we look at just the draft capital, he's going to get he's going to get third round or better draft capital. I think he will get second round, maybe. If you could sneak in there based on the production and based on how teams are going right now, they need wide receivers. In this offense, we see passing offenses down. He could fit the profile for the NFL. So we've talked about this cover, this cover two, too high safety kind of what we've seen, okay, that we've seen defenses go to the NFL. Zay could fit this profile of finding open zones, 
sitting and getting yak. Like that's something that you have to keep in mind when we're talk talking about a profile for Zay. Like he might be fitting in this new trend in NFL offenses, and that's something to keep in mind when we think of dynasty dynasty wise. But again, where do we have him in terms of the 2023 ranks? You know, I think JSN, Addison, Boutte, and Johnson are in the top tier. Then you're gonna have Downs in there, and then you're gonna have like Flowers and Mims in that in that area. So there's a lot of smaller, skinnier prospects this year when we look at these guys. Um, so you want to see, okay, what is draft capital? Draft capital is really going to play a difference here, but you have to give him a shout out. I think he's going to get a thousand yards this year. He's going to have his best production season. So shout out Zay, especially for someone that I've been very high on um, coming in two or three years ago when I first started in this space. So I appreciate you guys as always. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Bringing you content pretty much every day. We appreciate you guys. Check you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.